Well, let's call the meeting to order. Um, per the usual formula, uh, since we're recording this, uh, I'll just read the uh, citation down on the bottom of the meeting agenda. This meeting is being held remotely as an alternate means of public access pursuant to an order issued by the governor of Massachusetts dated March 12th, 2020, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. Uh, you are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the town of Hingham in accordance with the open meeting law. If any participant wishes to record this meeting, please notify the chair at the start of the meeting in accordance with NGL chapter 30A, section 20F, uh, so that the chair may inform all the other all other participants of the recording. And um, I will notify everybody that we are indeed uh, recording this meeting. Um, is recording this meeting. So having said that, I guess we can move right to uh, Paul Healy's minutes of meeting. Minutes of the last meeting. The, uh, I hope everybody's had a chance to take a gander at the September 24th, 2020 minutes. And and if you have Allie moves that we approve the minutes. Okay, do second. I have a second? Okay, uh, all in favor and uh, let's uh, let's go through the name again. Bob Garrity is is I Paul Gilly. Aye. Joe Kelly. Aye. Kelly Lauda. Aye. Uh, Bruce Macaloni. Aye. Anna Smallwood. Aye. Andy Touche. Aye. Guys, have it. Uh, the, by the way, I, I am thankful that everybody has made every meeting uh, that we've had so far. That's some sort of a record, I'm sure. It's a record on any building committee I've been on before, that's for sure. Uh, okay. I guess we can go right to an update from Kessel Booths, unless anybody has anything previous that they would like to talk about. Hey, if not, uh, Sean, are you there? Uh, yes, sir. So uh, tonight, uh, really just want to walk through some of the parking needs and necessities that we were touching on last week. Um, we don't have much of a floor plan update from last week. Just we're trying to consolidate some extra spaces and looking to make it a little bit more efficient. Um, sorry, I'm trying to find my share screen screen button. Can everyone see that? I can see it fine. Okay. So what we did was we kept the same building footprint with the exception of rotating the Sally port. Of roughly 90 degrees or not 90 degrees about 45 degrees to make it perpendicular to Essington to help with some additional traffic flow um, as the PD and FD enter in on the most most northern northwestern site portion of the site over here uh, coming down and then using utilizing the Sally Port and then exiting either back through the public entrance or circling back into to parking um, so that that's really the only building change that we're ready to present to the committee at this time. Like I said, we're, we're, we're working through additional building efficiencies, re relocating some, some functions to different locations of the, the building. But for feasibility needs, you know, this is the maximized footprint that we're looking at for today. <clears throat> um, in addition to that, what we did or have done is looked at a worst case scenario for parking needs built on current, um, the current zoning bylaws, which we touched on briefly last week that um, the current zoning bylaws doesn't have any specifics related to public safety facilities. So what we traditionally do and historically do is treat the building as a, um, a business use, uh, an office use, which, you know, per, per, per the local bylaws, you know, we have to provide five spots per thousand square feet. Uh, with that calculation, what we do is we omit the detention area, 
the sally ports, the processing area, uh, the apparatus bay, some of the support needs, you know, areas where there is no public function, if you will. You know, so what that does is it brings us down to about a 35,000 square foot um, office space use. And with that said, the requirement per the local zoning bylaws is approximately 175 spots. But we never, I don't say we never have to do that, but you know, that, that's just for the local, local uh, bylaws. On the other hand, the other distinction what we do is we look at the specific programming needs. <clears throat> uh, so if you're able to see this on our, our on the screen right now. So when we went through the programming needs uh, about a month ago, three weeks ago, three weeks to a month ago, uh, we dealt specifically with, um, you know, fire daily needs, uh, shift changes, approximately 18 parking spaces. Police needs for cruiser parking, unmarked cruisers, staff needs, shift changes, approximately 47 spots. And then what we typically do in a programming exercise uh, for a 60 person uh, meeting room, EOC room, providing two spot or <laughs> one spot for two seats. One vehicle. For one vehicle for two seats. So we're, we're providing 30 seats, 30 parking spaces for that requirement. So a quick calculation, you know, we're just under 100 spaces for program, programmatic needs of 95 seats, parking spaces. Um, as you can see to the right, um, in this location, we're providing 44 parking spaces for the public, which is specific for the, the uh, meeting room, uh, the EOC area, approximately 41 for the fire and approximately 82 parking spaces for the police. Uh, which is 167 spots. So as you can see real quickly, there, we're, we're providing roughly 70 spots in addition to the programmatic or greater than the program needs, um, but just shy of the 175 per the zoning bylaws that are currently set in, 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 in Hingham. But um, what we've established is that's, that's just more of a benchmark of what what is was a, was a requirement on today's standard. Um, so I'll walk through quickly of how we achieve those parking spaces. Bear with me here. So again, with this footprint, uh, public access hasn't changed off of Essington. Driver turns in, turns to the left. We're providing those 44 parking, meet, parking spaces in this location to the right of the building. To the left, uh, the, the rear corner of, of Essington and along Fresh Market is the secured parking entrance for police and fire. Again, we've got the lower parking uh, structure uh, and providing 62 spots underneath the, or in, in the parking structured garage. And then in the upper, uh, driving up the ramp here to get up to the upper elevation along Main Street, uh, sorry, 3A, providing another parking deck of the same size of 62 parking spaces. So in this parking structured for secured parking, it's 123 spots shared between both police and fire. Um, as you can see, we got rid of or relocated the fire parking needs along 3A and, and brought them back into the structured parking zone. Looking at the apparatus, the fire apparatus exit, Again, none of that has changed. It's still in the same location. Uh, gave a little bit more of a turning radius in that location just to help satisfy and help ease the, the return of the, the apparatus coming from the rear of, of Essington. Um, going back to the lower portion, the way to achieve the 175 spots, you know, we can, we can increase by those eight parking spaces here at the bottom to get to the 175. Again, that is just a local guidance or bylaw per the zoning ordinance, but per further conversations and, and our, our due diligence with Jeff Dirk, um, that is, that is a, I want to say a way to overachieve the, the, the current needs, but you know, the recommendation of just utilizing the current program needs the needs of the day-to-day -day operation for police and fire 
and providing sufficient enough parking for that meeting room, you know, roughly around that hundred spots is, is really adequate enough. But really what we're trying to do is prove and show to the committee tonight is that again, with a large building footprint that we're still trying to, to hone in and, and consolidate, provide the worst case scenario, if you will, of parking needs, uh, we're able to achieve that on this site. Some of the other conversations that have been behind the scenes slightly are these, these lines in the, in, the, in the rear of the site here along Essington. So these are, these are current utilities um, that are servicing other areas of the shipyard. So part of this efficiency need and building layout need, what we're trying to do or what we are doing um, is relocating the sally port to eliminate, this is a, um, a sanitary drain line, this red line here. And just below that is a, uh, a drain line as well, um, which you know, we don't want to have those underneath our buildings. So this is a small little portion of the, the structure that we're going to you know, get away from these utilities. Um, so they're not below our building. Um, along with those utilities, you know, the, the, all these lines, there's some other utilities along here, uh, which is under the parking lot. This is an access easement, which I know Susan can talk a little bit more detail about it, but this is somewhat of a dated access easement that's um, just some further conversations down the road that we'll, we'll have, to, have to endeavor, but it's, it's something that's it's been dated. Um, and we can, you know, again, it's, it's in the parking, um, it's in the parking lot. So I know that's a quick little summary of the parking analysis. So uh, Jeff, unfortunately, isn't able to attend this evening. Uh, he has a, an, another hearing, but we did forward around a memo, uh, which I'm more than happy to bring up um, or to show up. I don't know if, if um, Susan or Paul or Bob, if, if you had the opportunity to forward that, that I forwarded. I yeah, sorry. I just forwarded it two minutes ago when you started talking about parking. So I apologize, Sean had forwarded that to us um, a couple of hours ago, and I just realized I hadn't forwarded it along. But it should be in everybody's inbox now. Yeah, so... so I think, I think I forwarded it about an hour ago to myself. Yeah. You know, again... Oh, okay. Guys, keep me through with that. Right. So again, you guys are experiencing the continued kind of, you know... <laughs> up-to-date hourly information that we're, we're ever changing and, and working you know so we had a we had a good conversation with Jeff this afternoon explained our traditional protocol of how we how we do parking calculations and explained what I just explained to you to him directly so this is a memo from him um, again with him not being able to be a part of tonight's meeting but I'll briefly summarize but I highlighted here the parking requirements for the public safety complex not defined in the Hingham zoning bylaws. Uh, the project will require to assume its permit, special permit use of A3, which we've been discussing um, so far. So the most comparable land uses and included the zoning bylaws is professional office and auditorium. So like I stated, the professional office of roughly 35,000 square feet, that also includes the auditorium space um, for the public meeting room is located within the building. Uh, neither reflect, just um, verbatim here, uh, the unique nature of the project and associated parking demands. So as it goes a little bit farther down, this is a brief summary of what I just spoke to you about regarding the programmatic needs for fire, police, you know, accessible to total needs, so 69 spots. And then applying the auditorium use for our 60 person room, uh, uh, meeting room, uh, there's only a requirement of approximately 20 spaces. So like, if you remember earlier, we're provide, we, we are calc the, the, the 30 spaces. Um, so per program, there's only an 89 parking space requirement. Um, he likes to in include, so do we, a 10% variance of increase of, of commonly implied uh, functional to the parking demand. Um, so that brings us to the 98 total parking spaces. Um, this summary here is what we're providing. So the 171 spots, but I showed you the, the alternate option to get us to the 175, but you know, the meeting room, the 44, the fire needs roughly 41, but that's plus or minus depending on how we divide the, the, stru the structured parking. 
The police needs of 82, again, subdivided between the two, layer, two levels of structured parking and the four accessible parking spaces. Um, so I know I'm briefly summarizing his report. You, you have it, you can read it for yourself, but he agrees with our assessment. He agrees with um, our needs, agrees with our assessment with the programmatic needs and the police and fire needs. Uh, but obviously the, 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 the end all be all number of parking spaces will be determined once we get to that next level of design with the planning board, with, um, you know, further conversations with the town, more detailed conversations with Jeff, but from a, from a, um, keep hating to say it, but from our worst case scenario, you know, we're, we're oversupplying the parking needs, um, per, per, per the use and per the, um, current bylaws. Um, so I know I went pretty quickly through that. It allows for growth though, correct? It allows for substantial growth. Yes. And in our current programming, we've allowed for, uh, department growth as well, you know, providing some additional square footage for office space, uh, conference room space, meeting space, you know, so the growth is already built into our current building square footage of 55,000 square feet. Um, but this parking is also providing that additional growth as well. Um, so I have one question. Um, you know, you're providing public parking and maybe the chief can answer it, I don't know. Can this public parking be used by commuter boat users since it's public parking? So, um, my short answer. Sean, my, uh, no. Sean, you want me to take that one? Yeah, please. <laughs> um, I, I, I will, I will make a prediction, although I cannot speak for the planning board, that the planning board will require that these spaces be reserved for this building and not be used for any other purpose. So, um, you know, the, the parking is being provided to serve the uses on this parcel and not for any other purpose. Um, I mean, it raises a point that there might need to be some enforcement, but if you need to have enforcement of parking, there might be a few officers right there on site. I'd, I'd find it hard to believe that people would take that risk right in the police department's parking lot, but um, I, I think the short answer is no, that it probably will not be allowed to be used for any other um, purpose. Than so can we change the name, not call it public parking? Because let me tell you that uh, parking lot, MBTA parking lot gets full. And you know they, they park on with the train station, they'll park at the DPW place. So right. well, I think we need to be a, a little bit more stringent in the words that we use rather than calling it public parking. I think it's actually even on the plan, it's, um, to your point, Bruce, it's, uh, <laughs> it's designated visitor parking. Uh, uh, good. So I, I, you know, but to your point, I think, you know, once this becomes a printed presentation to the for town meeting, you know, it, adding additional language to, to the, these diagrams stating, you know, public facility visitor parking only or, or you know, some, some more language to that to, to, to help determine that to help distinguish the determination. All others will be towed <laughs> at owner's expense. <laughs> In directions to Fort Hill Street. Okay, for those of us who are uh, more conversant in planning board activities and zoning requirements relating to parking, um, how, how does this look? How does this look uh, from, how does Dirk's uh, review of what's likely to happen when we go to planning board and how it, how it would be protected? Do you feel like it sounds like a pretty good idea? I think Jeff's built in uh, a good analysis on the, the needs, um, assuming it's dimensionally compliant. It also allows for growth, which I think is an important consideration the public will enjoy hearing. Um, and it's enough to do the job, more than enough to do the job presently. And Jeff Dirk, who enjoys credibility with both the ZBA and the planning board, as well as the selectmen, um, has actually signed off and, and is uh, 
he's in agreement that the parking is adequate for the site. So would you conclude that this is a feasible analysis of the uh, public or the parking requirements for this parcel? Yes. At this point in time, understanding that every, there has to be a full design, full planning board review and approval sure. and all that type of stuff, right? Based on what I see and know presently, yeah. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Um, any more issues on parking or do we want to, and if not, do we want to chat a little bit about the uh, two, um, I think it's a sewer line and a water line, but I'm not sure, the, the green line and the red line on the uh, northerly side of the, the uh, parcel, uh, they're, I guess they're active. So when, and if we get a lot around to building this thing, we're gonna have to deal with that. And we're gonna have to deal with it during the design process. Uh, we know that everything is just a you know, rough schematic design at this point, but uh, KBA, have there been any type of thought process on whether the Sally Port can be uh, re-looked at the contours of the Sally Port to try to keep away from those, if any, those uh, lines, if, if at all possible? Yeah, there, there has, you know, so again, with, with along with the expedited schedule, you know, it's not to the level of, of presentation quality that we wanted to, to present this evening. But again, it's, it's looking to either rotate <clears throat> the Sally Port off of the, the, this elevation along Essington and rotate it along um, the, sorry, the Western elevation of, of the building. Um, and with that, and along with some of the consolidation of our footprint, the space is, the space is being able to be shown. I mean, it's, it's, I'm, I, I know I'm explaining it to you. I mean, we, we, we've seen it, we're, we're trying to work through it. Right. Um, we're, we're alleviating any sort of building structures along the, the sewer lines and the drainage lines here. Uh, we know that's, that's, that would be quite costly if, if we um, left it there. So with this real time evolution of all this, this, this production, you know, we, it, we're, we're working through that, but we're not going to be looking to change any of the access points off of Essington uh, apparatus location isn't looking to change, you know, so, so any of Jeff, Jeff's current um, assessments and, and uh, determinations won't, won't be changed. If anything, what we're going to continue to do is with the evolution of the building footprint and floor plans, we're going to provide additional green space, uh, provide, you know, more screening of, of trees, of, of certain secured parking areas, certain entrance areas, you know, more grand entry zones, uh, looking, you know, entrance will be along this, this area along either shipyard or Essington of this corner, but it's evolving. Uh, but from a feasibility determination, you know, we're, we're, we're showing you a, the worst case of, of all of these footprints. And obviously the worst case would be to maintain the, the building over on top of these lines, but we know that's, that's going to change. Okay, at what time, at what point in the design process would you expect to be able to uh, tackle that aspect of it, namely the Sally Port and the alignment with the uh, sewer and water lines? We, we are in, in process of that. And as of, as, as Sean had alluded to earlier, it just, it wasn't ready to be shared. Um, having just really gotten into the information of those utilities being under our building as of our meeting yesterday, um, you know, it, it, it's a little bit reactionary. We weren't able to develop it to a level that it was ready to, to share with the, the committee and, and the public forum. It was really undercooked. But um, the preliminary documentation that we've, we've got, even with this footprint, as we just kind of you know, <laughs> consolidated everything, that pulled outside of the green line or right up to the green line, which is the uh, the drainage line, which is one of the easier ones to relocate. Um, we're continuing and, and even as recently as one o'clock this afternoon, reworking the floor plan so that there's a little bit better flow for both the departments. Um, so that we should have by next week, um, you know, a, a more consolidated floor plan that flows and operates a little bit better. Uh, but 
you know, those things are really um, next steps. That's schematic design and design development where we start getting that, those things refined out. But the essence to take away from this today is that we can get away from those structures. We are providing the absolute most amount of parking or we can fit the most amount of parking on this site and still maintain not only current needs as far as the programmatic needs, but even some future growth. Okay, any further questions by the committee or anybody else on what we'll be doing with those lines and the design of the building related thereto? Uh, this is Tally. I I recall somewhere, I don't know, a few years ago when they were discussing certain things going on at that, uh, in the shipyard, that they were saying that the uh, utility lines for water and sewage are pretty much maxed out. If that's the case, how are we gonna be able to locate a building on this site and be able to tie into those utilities. Has anybody looked at that at all to see whether or not there is capacity or, you know, either water, electricity, and sewage? Yep, uh, we've been in contact with uh, Croker Design Group, Gabe Croker, uh, who is a civil engineer. Uh, he's he's had substantial amount of development in and around this location, uh, in and around the shipyard, which I'm not I'm assuming most of you have, are familiar with him. Uh, we also, he, he doesn't have a concern, initial concern, um, with providing utilities for this type of project in this location. Uh, we have also have another member on our team uh, uh, for the sewer design, uh, additional sewer design, because that's uh, one of the conversations or multiple conversations that we've been having with the Croker Design Group and, and the sewer, sewage treatment plant uh, down the street of, of those needs and requirements. So. There will be some additional treatment type uh, qualities necessary, but the infrastructure is substantial enough that it, another building of this type can be, be provided here on, in the shipyard. But again, though, those, are, those are details that are, are forthcoming. Uh, that, that's more detailed information than once the schematic design, design developments, some more of the, you know, layouts, you know, plumbing counts, um, you know, that, that higher level of detail, which gets flushed out, flushed out <clears throat> once, once we, we are all in this, uh, comfortable with the, um, the purchase of the property and the feasibility study. Uh, Sean. Yes. I, you said uh, sewage treatment, but I'm wondering if you simply meant um, pump station or lift station capacity. The, yeah, so the whatever next to the bridge. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Pump station. Sorry. I was like the Christmas Carol. <laughs> Who's going to show up next? A little off. Running slow. Okay. So, anything more on the uh, the utilities that have been discovered? I think so. Nothing along the utilities. Um, nothing currently that we've that we've been that we, that, have, that has been come, come our way. Um, I think at this, this point, everything that we have, we have, we have shared. Okay. And, uh, let's see. Are we go, going to do more on the site plan and the, uh, floor plan or how would you like uh, to proceed? Maybe? Yeah, no, I think, I think the only other, the only other information that we want to present is, you know, again, we're showing you the worst case scenario for parking counts, uh, Per Jeff's assessment, along with our assessment to kind of hone it back in or back down to the programmatic needs plus that 10% of growth, um, we've taken a brief stab at the um, 
a fair level of reduced parking, you know, really just taking the parking structure and reducing it to, uh, again, provide more green space around the building, kind of hiding the structure a little bit more, but really that's, we're already looking into alternate ways, alternate options to help enhance the site, not only on the streetscape side of 3A, uh, but also help help hide, if you will, the parking structure. You know, so the lower, still, still the same parking cir circulation along the site, the whole secured parking still the same, um, along with the upper um, elevation, or sorry, uh, main level um, grade at grade of 3A. So the potential, I know some of the conversations earlier on the last couple of building committee meetings a couple weeks ago is, you know, any sort of potential growth on in and around the site. Not a whole lot, obviously, but, you know, there, there are some slight options here, you know, with, with kind of helping reduce the parking counts. There's some more opportunity, not only for landscape, but potentially the opportunity for future growth of the building. Uh, not drastic, but again, you can see how reduction of parking and, and, and hardscape obviously provides the alternative of, of additional greenscape. Also, the, by reducing the hardscape, we reduce the, um, or we increase the amount of uh, pervious area or reduce the impervious area. So we, we're offsetting, you know, uh, drainage utility costs and things of that nature. Right. Stormwater utilities, stormwater drainage, stormwater management. So, you know, there'll be a balance uh, down the road when we get, when we get to that level of detail, but just again, diagrammatically showing the committee here of, of, of those alternate options and what the site could look like with reduced parking counts. We have discussed this um, also with Jeff and he's, on board with the, the concept of quantity and the, the modification here as well. Hey, let, let me just ask a general question uh, for key ADA is, um, what, what's the name of the deliverable that you'll expect to be providing to the town and our building committee? Uh, I guess when you're done with the schematic design, is, is that what it is? Is the schematic design deliverable, or what do you call it? So this what, will what be a, will have all this stuff in it. So this this deliverable for for the next couple of weeks will be a feasibility study okay. uh, deliverable, okay. yep. which will have some some you know the analysis of all the information that we've been gathering. You know these the study of, of the site plan that you know we we want to recommend to not only you but obviously the, the town. Um, the findings of, of all the information that's been gathered, <clears throat> not only with the help from the town, but also our findings, um, the geotechnical reports that we that are currently on the way to the labs, um, environmental issues and items, and, and, and you know, so everything that we've gathered will be part of this feasibility study and, and draft, and not in draft form, but a deliverable. And then once once um, approvals occur, then jump right into schematic design. The, um, the, the, the documentation as far as you know, plans, it'll be you know, conceptual site plan, much like this. This has actually been developed probably into well into the schematic design level um, for a site plan wise anyways. Uh, building's gonna be a little bit more conceptual where we're, we've got the larger blocks, things of that nature, but you know, the conceptual image of what this could look like um, and then we will have, you know, a, a budget, if you would, what we call a um, opinion. Problem. I get it right. Problem. Opinion of Problem. probable cost, which will be the total project. Opinion of total pro total project cost. I forget the exact term, but ultimately, what that does is that takes into account um, every potential. Um, Variable. Variable, if you would. Uh, you know, utility costs. It would be a utility transformer for the site. You know, there was at one point in time, utility companies would provide those free to the communities. 
they're now charging. There's a dollar value associated with that. So we're going to try and kind of, those are the typical things that we're used to, as well as some of the, um, you know, FF and E, all that will be all lumped into that uh, so that you have a overall uh, impact number so that you know that this falls in line with what can be supported, not up to, with purchasing of the site. You. Okay. Okay. And then um, what, how, how are you, you folks, KBA, do, what, what's your schedule for providing that deliverable? And are you, are you on time? Are you doing it quicker than you thought you were going to do? And I, obviously I'm looking forward to see, you know, whether this would be ready for town meeting and if, or if before town meeting, whether this is the type of deliverable that we would be providing to uh, the selectmen and the uh, advisory committee during the pre-town meeting process. So touching on that, I mean, we'll, we'll definitely have a, a very detailed draft over the next couple of weeks. Um, for for this group along with with any sort of um other committees advisory selecting um you know what i touched on at the end of last week's meeting about the our kind of our marketing campaign our online website you know if everyone's in agreement here you know we we, we typically put a final feasibility study on onto that with these floor plans these site plans you know so those deliverables or up to your discretion on how it, how it gets presented out to the rest of the community. Um, but for this group committee, uh, advisory committee, along with the, the selectmen, I mean, we'll, we'll provide a, a very solid draft document over the next couple of weeks. Um, and by the time the town meeting will be finalized, obviously, but <clears throat> the, um, I think if I can, Sean, just to, I think to, to, answer Mr. Garrity's question more, um, not, not directly, you, you're doing a great job with it. Just as far as overall, by next meeting, we will have a draft document that has that total project cost and we kind of support the um, kind of go, no go relative to the site, whether or not this is a valid site for, for pursuing. Um, as part of that, I guess the only variable into that is even though they're expedited, some of the preliminary dates that we're getting are from the, the soil testing are not till the end of next week. Um, we do have a preliminary description from our, our geotech report uh, or our geotech, but the, to put a, um, it's just a preliminary description. It's hard to put a dollar value to that and what that's going to mean to site development. So those may come towards the end of next week, maybe just after our meeting. So we'll present a number to the group, um, which should be pretty coherent and, and, and include everything as, as much as we can with some minor modification before going before the, the board of selectmen based on updated information from either the LSP or the geo there. Do you calculate the drainage cost by some kind of modeling assumption? Yes, basically. Okay. <laughs> the amount of it, it, it's, that's why we have an estimator. <laughs> I'll start out that way. That's not my or our area of expertise, but she'll look at the amount of paved area and based on the amount of paid area, there's a, a number of structures that would be required. So that, and then underground piping associated with that. So uh, she's very good. And there is contingency in there for any anomalies that may occur. Um, but yes, there is. So impliedly, there's a system built into the concept that you're relying on based Correct. on the you. Right? Correct. Yes. yes, correct. Did that help, uh, Mr. Garrity? Uh, yeah, no, no, very, very much so. Um, okay, why don't we talk a little bit about your progress on architectural treatments now that we're talking about green space? Uh, unfortunately, because of the, the modification, we don't really have anything 
to share for um, architectural progress at tonight's meeting. Um, you know, we are in the process and we will absolutely have something by next week. Um, mm -hmm. But the, you know, the footprint will reduce, I will say that much. Um, you know, we are, we are squeezing the building so that effective, efficient operations um, will be taking place. And we have, have reduced the number of stairs within the building um, in, in an effort to increase the efficiency of the building as well. And, and concurrently, and concurrently, you know, Mr. Healy provided us with his, um, kindly provided us with his poster in his office or his home or wherever that was, but it was the, uh, you know, back from the shipyard, um, I don't call it a design strategy, but the uh, architecture. architecture that was, that was addressed, you know, back 15 years ago. So we're, we're, we've, we've, we've analyzed that, we're reviewing it, yeah, okay. threw that into the rest of it. Sorry. A lot of, I mean, obviously what's there today is, bears little resemblance to what was there in 1942, but uh, <laughs> what the developer did was uh, it took um, photographs from Quincy Shipyard, Bethlehem Steel ran both shipyards. So we looked at those when we were looking at each individual building that was being proposed as, as part of the application and, and tried to take pieces and themes from it to kind of give that feel of, of what this place once was like. That that was kind of the, the, the effort there. And, you know, obviously uh, it, the shipyard is, is brand new, at least in my mind. Um, so it, it just, it would be good to maintain that consistency uh, to the extent that we can in the process, because I'm pretty sure there's going to be people that are going to be interested in making sure that that happens. So, I mean, I, I understand you got to, you got to put the hottest fire in front of you, um, but just food for thought going forward in the future on that issue. Sure. There's, as we round the next bend, or over the next hurdle, if you would, um, whatever analogy you'd like to use, there's plenty of time and discussion that we will refine what the overall building imagery will look like in the next phases. But, but for next week, for, for the meeting with advisory and, and, and um, everyone else, I mean, we'll have a, similar to the imagery that we've been showing you, already for the building exterior with more of a, more of a, a hand sketch on top of it, but it, it'll, it won't be fully detailed, fully defined, obviously just because of, of where we're at everything. But like Todd just said, there'll be many, many months of evol involvement and development as, as we progress. Um, well, you, you, you indicated a, a moment ago that you, you planned on shrinking the footprint and increasing the efficiency and reducing the stairs. I mean, you said an awful lot of things in a very short series of words. So I, I'd be interested in that. I, I realize it's still a work in progress. So um, I'd just be interested to see what you're, you're contemplating. Most definitely. I mean, I, I would say, I mean, if, if the committee agrees to it or, you know, early next week, once it, once we are comfortable with presenting it, I mean, if, if we're able to, or would like to, we're, we're more than happy to send that out prior, obviously before um, next Thursday. Great. Okay, moving right along here, if we're sticking with the agenda, uh, we pretty much already talked about cost estimates, I believe. Uh, if anybody wants some more information now, then we can ask the questions. But it sounds like you'll be uh, we'll be talking cost estimates next week, correct? That's the intent. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be final or anything, but just we'll be able to start to look, see something that 
So it would give us an order of magnitude estimate and we can think about that. So um, let me see. Now, slightly different information is the geotech environmental uh, and general, general uh, field investigations. We talked about that a little bit, about the, the, um, the, cert, the utilities but not for the site that we'll uh, have to deal with. And uh, anything else? I know there have been a bunch of geotech investigations. I believe you said that we're, we should be getting feedback from the geotechs by next week. Is that right? Correct. So, so uh, geotech engineer finished their borings on Tuesday. Uh, so all that information um, was sent off to laboratories. Um, we did get it, as Todd mentioned a little bit earlier, we did get an informal uh, brief description on of what was found or, or portrayed to be found. You know, the, the half the site under with underneath the slab, the existing slab is, 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 is Phil. Phil. General <laughs> Phil. General Phil. Uh, so, you know, and then the other, so there, you got about a 50-50 site below the slab of there'll be some invest, not investigation, but there'll be some costs um, related to, um, you know, structural needs, depending on, you know, where our footprint, footprint is and everything else. But, you know, generally it's all good information, nothing really out of the ordinary, specifically in this, this area in the shipyard. Uh, you, haven't, you haven't discovered any time bombs yet underneath there? Not under the six holes that they, they've, did so um the uh monitoring wells were completed yes nope uh yeah yesterday wednesday um and that information will be sent to the laboratory on uh, monday and i believe um susan can correct me if i'm wrong but i believe uh they authorized authorized a 24 and a 48 hour turnaround in all their reports or the, the lab re testing reports so we'll be getting environmental information early to the middle of next week, and then we'll have geotechnical middle to the end of next week as well. So that'll just accompany all the information that we'll, we will be presenting in our, our budget estimate along with uh, next week's meeting. Okay, anything else on the building at this point from any other committee or other members? or other people sitting in on this meeting? If not, we can just go ahead and talk about the discussions, our formal communications with the butters, especially the MBTA, if there's any update on that. I understand there, are, there have been some positive discussions to, to break the ice on uh, our requirements to develop this, this site and how other people might be affected by it. Um, probably Susan Murphy, I guess. Is that right? That would be Tom. Tom, do you want to take that one? I'm sorry, Bob, you were cutting out. Can you ask the question? Uh, sure. How, how are the discussions with the abutters about the different uh, requests we're going to have to make of them as this project develops to tie into either easements or whatever interest they have in in the size of the development of our site vis-a-vis -vis their own uh, expectations on the properties they own. So yes, uh, I just missed the beginning. Um, yeah, so the uh, Samuel said they would be happy to work with us and the MBTA thought they would, said they would get back to me this week and did not. So I will follow up with them and have an answer for you definitively from the T next week. Hey, well, for the T, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> One week means nothing with the T, so. Uh, I know, I know. You, you got to keep hammering away at them. Find the person who's most knowledgeable and, and uh, <laughs> don't let them out of your, your eyesight. So. That's right. Okay, well, I guess that's all we can hope for. At least Samuel sounds like they're more than receptive to uh, you know, dealing with whatever we require. Samuels was good to work with Bob on the shipyard project. Yeah. Oh, good. good. Very responsive. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Um, I guess we're into discussing uh, next meetings and 
what's about to happen and what the perhaps we should discuss a little bit about what the other town agencies who are very involved uh, in this in taking over this uh, uh, project from a public uh, from a town meeting perspective. So uh, we do have a meeting next next Thursday, October eighth. Um, in that meeting, I would like to. I would like to see if we could, if it's ready, and it may not be ready, and if it is already fine, I think we can we can kick over the feasibility determination until the following week. Uh, but I, I would like to still shoot for possibly for our committee at least considering the fee, making a determination on feasibility at the end of the different presentations from KBA next week, and. and uh, because I always like, I, I always say one rule I used to be a lawyer, always be prepared one week ahead of time. Because you know you never, you know that you're not gonna meet it, but at least you have the target date. Uh, and uh, so if we could at least consider what, whether we're ready for a feasibility determination on behalf of our community by, by ne the end of next, me next uh, meeting, then uh, you know, I'd still like to keep that target. What I will probably do this week is just uh, send out, or in the next few days, send out just a draft of what what I would see as a, uh, a a possible vote, just for everybody's consideration to think about on how we would word the motion to uh, determine that the the site is feasible. The different, you know, based on all the different information we provide they provided today. Uh, so the October 8th meeting, in my mind, it, it isn't locked in. We don't have to do it. I mean, the meeting's locked in, but we don't have to make the determination that day. But the more we can make a determination, I think it will give information to the other people, namely the, the, uh, the, the selectmen, the advisory committee, and whoever else should be in the, in the chain here to, to, because they'll be going ahead, I believe, with their meetings on the week of October 12th. Uh, and if we've already done our thing, I mean, I, I assume that they're gonna give us a lot of deference on what our position is on feasibility. And they would like to have that in hand and be able to review it all before uh, they have to do what they have to do as, uh, as the process continues. Um, if anybody can refresh my memory on when we think, will, will the selectmen be, are they intending to take this up on the week of October 12th? And, and how about the advisory committee? Anybody so, remember any dates there? Yeah, so the dates are still a little bit up in the air, Bob, uh, okay. just because we're trying to optimize the schedule and give people as much time as possible to consider things. Um, if you're voting on the 8th, it changes things. That gives us more time. But if you were to vote on the 13th and the vote were to obviously to, to move the, the project forward, if that is the recommendation, then I think the joint hearing would likely would take place on the 15th. Um, perhaps, and I haven't spoken with, um, with Bob Curley about this specific um, schedule, but maybe ADCOM would uh, kick the tires on the 19th with the Board of Selectmen doing so also on the 20th, perhaps with a Selectmen vote uh, on the 20th. That will be the second time they will have discussed it. And then perhaps ADCOM could take it up and vote it on the 21st, which would give us time to, um, to kick things back to the printer uh, as needed the the following day um, and then give the printer a week to get things out and into people's mailboxes and all of this assumes a November 14th meeting date um, and there's you know there's there's a slight possibility that that meeting date could get pushed back a week to the 21st and so we're still trying to finalize that but but I th that's the rough schedule and like I say if there's if if this board takes up um, its vote earlier and you know the town meeting 
can get moved to the 21st from the 14th, both, both of which are questions, then that certainly gives the advisory and the Board of Selectmen time to consider it over a broader um, period of time. So um, those are the things that we're trying to work on. There's uh, some moving parts in all of that. So it would probably help you if we did manage to do it earlier rather than later. It certainly, yeah, at, at this point, as you can imagine, every, every day counts. So, yeah, it certainly would. But I also want to make sure that, you know, this committee, um, it, you know, has the time it needs to make, a, to make an informed opinion. Okay. Now, you mentioned uh, there was a joint hearing. That I, I assume that's joint with the advisory and the selectmen. Is that right? Yep, I believe that was the intent was to have um, uh, Sean and Todd and their team come in and present to in a joint session with the selectmen and the advisory committee and, okay. you know, and, 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 and you guys as well. Okay, and then the following week or they'd have, they'd have to take action on based on the information they were provided about the plan? Yeah, the following week over the course of several meetings, yep. Okay. Um, so just okay. well, so far we're on schedule. <laughs> yeah, but just for planning purposes, Tom, this committee would be anticipating to participate on the ten fifteen meeting. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that I mean, going much further starts to create scheduling conflicts. So I just throw that out there. Okay. In terms of what you just said. Yeah. Okay. Anything Good. else? I have a question for JR. Uh, it's Tally. JR, I just want to, are we still going to go to Needham on the 9th or are we canceling both of those meetings? Right. Nope. We're going to Needham on the 9th. Um, okay. We will, we're arranging another time for Mansfield. Okay. All right. Uh, yep. Uh, Medford. Thank you. Medford? Uh, no. Mans it is Mansfield. Yeah. Mansfield, yes. Okay. I know, so for Midman, I don't think we're going there. <laughs> okay. okay, so we're still shooting for next Friday for the, uh, the trip. And that yep. will only be, the, it will be in the morning, do we think? Or the afternoon? It'll be, or? it'll be at the same time. Uh, so I think it was 1045 and 1145 in okay. Needham. Two, two groups. Okay, now what, um, just, just in case I'm not there, uh, but I, but I plan to be there, but um, on these types of meetings, I think one thing, uh, and Paul will probably chime in on this, is it's always a good idea to ask the people what doesn't, what didn't work, or what they're disappointed in, or what they should have done if they had to go over, go through it again. And usually it's small details, but uh, you can learn a lot from, you know, what they wish they did two years ago, three years ago, six weeks ago, whatever it is. So that's always a good thing for a committee member to ask. And, you know, and uh, you can learn a lot and then you can talk to ADA with some sense of authority and say, uh, hey, we understand uh, you did a pretty lousy job over there. So let's not let that happen. How are you going to address it on that facility? Well, they, they you know, that. I'm sure that the police and fire will be more than happy to tell us the shortcomings so we can get the superior design of what we're doing. All right. Okay, and I hope the police and fire uh, send an attendee and they can be critical too. I would anticipate and, uh, that, that would happen. They are the user agency, so they're really the ones who have the biggest say in this whole thing. Yeah, so no. Pay I attention, fellas. Pay attention. <laughs> yes. Excellent observation. Okay, any other uh, words of wisdom here on any part? If not, uh, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, uh, we'll have a head count. Bob Garrity, yay. Paul Healy. Aye. Joe Kelly. Aye. Kelly Lauder. Aye. Chris McElhoney. Aye. Donna Smallwood. Aye. Andy Toussaint. Aye. Okay. Motion is passed.